The sky should remain clear for this afternoon. It's a shame they did not marry at dawn. The light brings beauty to the fore. Is she anyone I know? You can bid her good day the next time you spy a mirror. Never fear. I'll have plenty of time for beauty while I help Edith prepare. You should not let Trig labor alone too long, lest he fail his husbandly duties at a crucial moment. <laughs> I need to spend some time in the shop. And then there's the matter of your gift. The closest kept secret in all our twenty years of marriage. I'm impressed you've been able to hold your tongue. You surprise me every day. I thought it time I return the favor, at least once. You already have. I may have grumbled when you woke me, but the sunrise was especially beautiful. Tomorrow then, as well? <laughs> Let's get through today first. Trick! Started unloading without me, I see. <laughs> Heavy labor before getting married. Your bride won't want to seal the covenant with a kiss. If you don't want me to sweat so much, you can help me move this wares to our stall. <laughs> I give you your freedom and you see fit to order me around. You're lucky I've no more expeditions to tempt you with. Ah, uh, Edith would never have it. She means to settle and raise a fine crop of golden-haired angles. I've never dared ask what drew you to her. I know there are many fine Norse women who were devastated when you announced your betrothal. She brought me to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that doesn't seem like much to some, yet she also thinks differently. Every conversation is a discovery of where our family traditions overlap and where they differ. A meeting of hearts and minds, then. You are doubly blessed. Thrice, Thorstein, for your friendship and our new trade partnership. Your hard work made me a rich man. It's only fair I return the favor. I'll have to make a few sales today to cover the cost of Trick's wedding gift. Welcome to Jorvik. I have fine wools from across the sea, mead and honey from the lands to the south, and warm winter pelts from the northern tribes. Good day. I've traveled from the Caliphate in search of gifts for the wedding of my daughter. I need 16 ells of wool, the pelt of a large bear, and three pots of summer honey. I hear your prices are excellent. You've heard true. Let me tally the cost. For all those goods, I would ask a mere two ounces of gold. You drive a hard bargain, but I've been assured your quality is second to none. All right, I'll pay your price. I hope you'll send others to see me as well. Good day to you, sir. We're looking for donations to help the sick and the poor. Do you have anything you could offer? A noble cause, to be certain. Let me think. I can give you some mead and some meat to fill empty bellies, but I'm afraid I can do little more. Any donation is welcome, brother. The Lord favors those who give joyfully. Bjorn! It's been many months. How goes the northern trade? Not well. 
The pigs are savages, and the angles are little better. They all want something for nothing, with no middle ground to be had. Surely that's the nature of business, my friend. Finding a bargain that will work for everyone. Not when I owe money to Goose for me, it isn't. Can I count on you, Thorstein? If his men come for me, will you stand by my side? Take the cloak pins from that shelf and sell them in the marketplace. They'll fetch a fine price for little effort. Enough to keep Guthrum happy while I find buys for my other wares, to be sure. You've saved me again, brother. Thank you. Hello. I would like to commission a runestone to commemorate many years of happiness and success with my wife. A fine choice, with many options. I was afraid of that. Show me. First, you will need to select the type of stone. Granite, please. A solid choice. It will weather the elements for generations to come. Is that the type of stone you want? Yes, it is. Then let us continue. Now you will need to choose what you want engraved on your runestone. Love conquers all. Let us too yield to love. Sometimes the words we need best come from another's tongue. Is this the inscription you want? Maybe not. Did you have something else in mind? Now you will need to choose what you want engraved. Gunhilde loved me when I was in Stavanger. Since she loves you still, it must be some loving indeed. Is this the inscription you want? Maybe not. Did you have something else? Now you will need to... Love me. I love you, Gunhilde. Kiss me. I know you well. A declaration for the ages. Is this the inscription you want? Yes. I'll get started on it right away. Your wife is sure to be happy with the results. All that remains is to confirm the design you would like me to carve for you. Gladly. This looks like a nicely hewn runestone. It is. Tall and proud. A runestone will declare your words to the world for all the ages. It is a symbol of strength, wealth, and remembrance. Do you want a runestone for your wife? A good, solid runestone will soon be yours then. I am certain your wife will be delighted with the results. Then we are all done. Well, you made it. And it seems you washed. Both admirable qualities in the husband. I try to hold myself to some kind of standard. Mm, the trick is to let it slip, little by little, as the years go by. Is this truly your advice on how to begin a marriage? No, my friend. It's advice on how to end one. When the threads get tangled like that, you need to take a walk to cool your head. 
One small move and you'll need to cut the whole cloth free. Easy to say, harder to do. I swear, some days the shuttle has a mind of its own. Those are the days you most need to rest. Come back with a clear head and you'll find the shuttle is more agreeable as well. What a vision stands before me. But of course my wife had an excellent canvas to work with. <laughs> Ever the flatterer, Thorstein. Don't you know I'm soon to be a married woman? Which is why I must get all of my compliments in now, before you turn as haggard as Gunhilda. <laughs> One of these days she won't forgive you for these jests. Then on that day I hope the gods themselves will intervene. Father Elrich, Trig brought me to one of those Christian gatherings last week. I didn't understand a word of it, but your conviction was riveting. You honor me, Thorstein. Praise from the merchant with the silver tongue speaks volumes to my success in communicating God's glory. It's a task you are most well suited for. I try, my son. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today to witness a merging of the traditions of Northumbria and Norway, as Trigg and Edith begin their new life together. Here, where Edith's mother and father are buried, may they give their blessing to this holy union as they watch from within the Lord's sight. Love is patient and kind. It is not boastful or proud. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Trigg, do you take Edith to be your wife here in the sight of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I do. Edith, do you take Trigg to be your husband with Almighty God and your parents' souls as witness? I do. Then let no man separate what God has joined together. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May Freya bless you with many children, and Thor protect you from life's storms. Thank you, my friends. I'm so happy for them. With any luck, their marriage will be as long and prosperous as ours. I don't know about that. There's a new baker in Coppergate who's quite caught my eye. Then I suppose I'd best learn to bake. <laughs> Thorstein! I've been looking everywhere. I said you would vouch for me, but they want the gold now! Slow down, Bjorn. We'll talk to them together. I fear they want to do more than talk, brother. My husband and I are on our way home. This won't take long, I promise. Keep that delicious stew of yours by the fire, and I'll be back before you can lay out the bowls. If you don't have him home before moonrise, I will come and find you. You won't like what happens after that. Please, Thorstein, quickly! Keep the hearth warm for me, my love. Coddle him, my love. He's a grown man, not an errant child. Slaves talk, Gunilda. If he returns to his family and says we mistreated him, I might find myself in a duel. No duels until you've worked on your swordsmanship. Thorstein? 
Thorstein, wait! I should know better than to ever doubt you. Thorstein, where are you? Let me help you!
I don't know if you like rumours, but I do, and rumour has it York is one of England's most haunted cities. Built by the Romans, it's said that ghosts of fallen soldiers still roam the city, inspiring a locally brewed beverage. The Centurion's Ghost must be a pale ale. To emulate this mystical atmosphere, level designers took the opportunity to place an underground location, reusing Roman-era abandoned sewers. It's a way for players to walk around unnoticed. But what if those ghost rumours are true? They're not true. Ghosts don't exist. Sleep well. It seems that Vikings and Anglo-Saxons could roughly understand each other at the time, as both of their languages sounded similar and had diverged only a few centuries before. To help actors during the recordings, the voice design team relied on linguists such as runologist Maya Bakval of Uppsala University. Uppsala. That makes me kind of happy, that word. Lines were then written in three versions, in English, for context, in the original language, Latin, Old Norse, Old English, and in phonetics for accurate pronunciation. Pronunciation, like that. Interestingly, it felt quite natural for Icelandic actors to pronounce Old Norse. Well, they wouldn't need a dictionary if their great-great-great-great-grandparents were around to translate, though that would be very unlikely.
Jorvik, now called York, is a great example of how Anglo-Saxon and Norse civilizations merged over time. Its multiple docks and narrow streets filled with exotic supplies welcomed international traders year-round. To represent this thriving hub, level artists and level designers used Coppergate, one of the city's most notorious landmarks. Known at the time as the Cup Street, where merchants sold handmade cups and pots, it was taken as a reference and extended to the rest of the town. With its small wooden houses and stalls tightly built together, Jorvik clashes with stone-built Anglo-Saxon towns.